Hey, tip one for new callers that might have a hard time using a diaphragm. Um, well, if you can't use a diaphragm, I would suggest that you probably try an open read. Uh, Phelps makes some really, really good open reads. Uh, really, I, I, I pride myself in, I cut my teeth in early in my hunting, uh, when I'm hunting elk, uh, is using a, a open read because for the simple fact that I really could, could not master a diaphragm quite yet to perfection. So I would try to locate the bulls and then move in and use some of these open reads. And what, I mean, you probably would find some videos out there online of me. I would have this lanyard on my neck and, and I would try to spray some out. And this is nothing but a simple duck lanyard. You could probably get it at Sportsman Warehouse, Big R, for us in Colorado. Um, if you're not in Colorado, you probably can find it at Dick Sporting Goods um, or any other kind, like Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's or something. And it's just a duck lanyard. And what I would do is spread them out. So I would have one here, one here, so they wouldn't ding with each other. And because um, the more noise you made with these, I mean, if you had all this thing filled with uh, calls, it would just be dinging all around. But so I would spread them out and, uh, and I would use those in like a sequence calling scenario. So if I was trying to really get that bull riled up, I've already located that bull. I would move in and use different ones at different times trying to sound like a, a herd of cows. Um, so first of all, all the, the uh, open reeds, they come with the castration ring. They could be different colors, but I think I've only personally seen like a green castration ring or a black castration ring. If you ever go to like a tractor supply or big R, they have these rings for farmers who, who have uh, uh, maybe cattle, sheep, or, or goats, and they use these rings to castrate the males, uh, keeping them from reproducing. But, so I personally like to take off this castration ring and what I mean is I keep my reed open where it's already flexed right there. You have to be careful with that too because it could easily get hung on something and bend that reed, but you could easily bend it back, but it may not sound the same. And what I like to do is I pucker my lips, kind of like if I didn't have any teeth and my gums would go in. I pucker my lips at the very beginning of the, the reed and I roll my lips forward. And all I'm really trying to do is, first of all, is just try to make a sound with it. So, some people turn their reed, would read down to their lips. I can't do that. I never even taught myself how to do that. But I use read up, and I feel like I just, I take my hand, and I roll it in. Wee, wee, kind of sounds like this. And what I found is that I get a little bit more nasally sound out of it. And, and if you're, you're in the woods and you hear some of these older, mature cows, when you pick up some of these bigger ones, uh, Phelps makes this great, uh, I think this is an easy estrus. Um, don't get me mixed up, I forget all the names. They all have different crazy names. Um, but the, the, bigger, the bigger your open read, you're probably more focused on like an older, mature cow versus a open reed that's a little smaller and it might sound like a adolescent cow or a calf. Um, but once again, really just trying to get the sound of it. And it's all based off pressures of your lips. So you don't have to worry about on a diaphragm, pressing your tongue up against it, making that sound. You just want to use your lips. Some people use their teeth. and I. I just don't feel like I have enough control to do that. And that's personal. If you like to use your teeth, you can use your teeth too as well. But I just don't, I have more pressure with my lips. And once again, I'm rolling forward. And as I roll forward, that, that actually brings that reed up, letting more air in. Um, so your smaller, your smaller uh, open reeds, uh, same way, same, same concept but they just sound more like a adolescent cow or a calf. 
You can hear the difference. Now, if you want to make a calf sound, I just cut it real short. In a calf, if you've ever been in the woods, the calves, calves don't shut up. They'll keep making all kinds of noise. And then they might sit for a little bit and then they continue making noise. Um, but I, I can tell you and I can personally tell you that it took me a, a little while to master an open read. And what I really cut my teeth on and I pride myself into it is my open reads. I'm actually glad that I actually started with the open read because as I started mastering the diaphragm, it made it easier for me to uh, control the, the, the actual uh, breath or the, the air that I'm pushing through that open, I mean that diaphragm, because I practiced on my, my open reads. Now, if you're a duck hunter, this will probably be pretty easy for you. If you, you call coyotes with open reads, it'll probably be pretty easy for you. But for the ones that can't use the diaphragms, these open reads are money, especially when you're trying to make like an estrus wine and it sounds like this. And it's just a wavy length sound that goes in. And that's more of a, a, a cow and estrus. And I use the bigger ones on that. Um, but hey, Welcome to the Colorado High Art 200s. That's tip number one. If you can't use a, I mean a diaphragm, use an open read.